Well, hi, it's Jerry with I Love RV Life. You may have seen our video where we just purchased the MoFi 4500, and wow, has it made a huge difference in our workflow and entertainment internet. We're gonna take it one more step today. We're gonna to install an outside antenna. <laughs> it just gets better from here. Well, hi, it's Jerry. Uh, we bought this MoFi 4500. There's a lot of videos, a ton of videos out on YouTube about these devices, and rightfully so, they are a game changer. I mean, a very substantial game changer. Uh, before we got the MoFi, we just used the standard little hotspot. Uh, you see them around. The, the big one right now, we use a Verizon prepay service. Uh, the biggie right now is the 8800 that uh, is a, a nice unit. It's, there's nothing wrong with them at all for what they're designed to be able to do. Simple hotspot, press the button, and boom, they pop up. Here's the downside. Uh, the downside is sometimes you get into congested towers. Sometimes you get into areas where you have fringe coverage. And some people will use something like your um, WeBoost. Uh, and there's other devices to be able to boost the signal up, and there's nothing wrong with those. Uh, we've decided to go a different route. Uh, with the MoFi 4500, these antennas actually work pretty well. We were up in the North Georgia mountains for several weeks, and um, I use this exclusively for my work. had a lot of work to do <laughs> in between play. And uh, I was getting consistent 30 uh, megabytes up and down uh, with no problems whatsoever. Where we're at right now is absolutely horrendous for any type of cell coverage. It's just awful. Um, I, I'll show you some test results of this. Uh, we were getting just with this alone with these paddle antennas. These, these are actually an upgrade antenna. Uh, you can buy them with the little stick antennas like this. These are, these are the Wi-Fi inside. And then these paddle antennas are an upgrade. And they help. Uh, they do help a lot. We are inside an RV and these paddles, even though they're really, really good and you know, you can do something like sit this up by a window or something like that to improve. But again, your cell tower may be on the other side of the camper. It may be on the back side or the front side and it's just not a convenient place to be able to put these. Well, as a result, uh, where we're at right now, the cell coverage is just horrendous, just horrendous. Um, I was testing with this just a little while ago and I was lucky to get one to two megabytes up and down and even with that it was just sporadic the other thing that you can do with this and you can you can actually change bands again there's videos on that as well that you can find out on how to select your bands and do that type of thing it's really outside the scope of today's video what i'm wanting to do is make it super super simple for us just to be able to pull up to our spot flip a switch turn all of our electronics on and not have to worry about you know moving this guy around inside the camper what we've decided to do is go with an outside antenna again we could use a wee boost but i don't want to have another electronic device if i don't have to have another one in the rv i got enough as it is so here's what we're going to use um, this i hope i'm going to pronounce this right this is called a pointing po Y N I T I N G. I'll put some links uh, in the description, and you can go out to ilovervlife.com to today's blog and get the links where I purchased this. I have done some testing uh, outside this video just to see how it would work. Uh, bottom line, I just took this and set it outside on a table uh, and did some testing, and I was getting about a three just. Just setting it out there on a table, out in the, out, you know, right next to the camper, I was getting a 300% improvement in speed in this again terrible area. Now, you know, did I go from you know one megabyte <laughs> download, you know, to 20? Nope, uh, I didn't do that. But I did. I was going to five and six. So for this area, wow, I'll jump and down up and down for something like that. And I really think when we get into other areas 
where I would be getting, you know, 10, 12, 20, I'm going to get at least, I'm going to suspect about, you know, double that uh, using this outside antenna. The nice thing about it is I, I'm not going to have to run around and, you know, inside the camper and try to find where the best place to, you know, get something hooked up. And then we're going to hook it up back here in the back where um, it's just, you know, easy access for uh, everyone that's sitting inside the camper. Right now, I want to focus on this pointing uh, and uh, we'll see where we can go from there. Uh, I think it's going to be an interesting video and uh, we're going to be drilling a hole in the roof. Woohoo! That's going to be fun. Uh, so here's the box that it comes in. Uh, again, this is not going to be a pristine unboxing because I've already taken it out and been doing some testing outside, but uh, I'll just show you the components that are here. Uh, this is the uh, antenna itself you know, size-wise, you know, here's my hand. Uh, it's not, not very large. Um, it does have an adhesive backing for sticking it. And then what I'm going to be doing is not only using that adhesive backing, um, but I'm also going to caulk around the sides to kind of hold it in place. Uh, it comes with a couple different size adapters uh, for you know, placing inside here. Um, I guess if you were going to use this like on a car or a truck or, you know, some type of a vehicle roof install, this is roughly about one inch. Uh, to, and this, this goes inside this little section here. I'll be showing you that as well. And then you have this longer unit that I hope I hope is going to reach through the roof of where I'm going to be installing this in the back. And these just screw right inside here. Uh, you can also do like a flat mount. They even have a magnetic kit that you can put. You see these little holes here. You can put uh, rare earth magnets that they sell and uh, you can snap this on top of a metal roof. Uh, again, we're going to be putting this on our, you know, just regular roof that we have on top of our camper, which is PVC. Um, it also comes with uh, some very, very nice instructions uh, that uh, talk about the install here. This is showing, um, you know, the different types of connections. This would be a, you know, a maximum. Well, we only have, again, the two MIMO connections that we'll be using on our uh, 4500, uh, MoFi 4500. So again, when we're looking at this antenna, they say there's several do's and don'ts that we need to be concerned about uh, in the install. Uh, one of the things that they talk about is that you do not want this within, I think they said a 0.5 meters, a half a meter of any other type of device. So things like your air conditioner, I would think also maybe your antenna that you have for your TV, any of those types of things, you want to be about a half a meter. What's that, you know, what, 12, 13, 14 inches, something like that uh, is a good rule of thumb. It also mentioned that you needed um, 400 centimeters square of ground plane, metal ground plane. Well, we tested that. Now, I am not going to do that. Uh, I'm not suggesting that you not, if you do this installation, test it for yourself. We're going to be putting it up on our roof uh, and there's nothing conductive. So when you look at a ground plane, that's typically a, a you know, grounded metal surface that you would be installed, stalling on. And um, it says that the antenna needs that ground plane to be able to operate properly. Well, I tried it and it made zero difference in reception. So I don't know if the higher bandwidths are going to make a difference. We're going to go ahead and install it without that ground plane. So the directions say to use that, we're not. And uh, we'll just see how we go from there. I can always add it back if I think it's going to be necessary. So what I would buy is, you know, you can go to one of the big box stores and buy something like a 24 inch by 24 inch thin aluminum sheet and then put it up on top of the roof. I really don't want it up there if I don't have to have it. And so far in my testing, I saw absolutely zero benefit about having that. So anyway, we're gonna install it as is. Let's walk back here to the back and I'll show you where we're gonna be placing this.
Okay, I have uh, placed the MoFi unit here uh, where I'm going to be uh, mounting it. This is uh, actually just going to be sitting here on the table, and I'm going to do a test inside. I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be mounting it right up here uh, for the next test, and that'll be the permanent installation. But I want to do a test, kind of like a before and after. So here you see the paddle antennas uh, that are located on the back, and uh, this is before I make the connection to the outside. Uh, so let's see what kind of speed test I'm going to get here. I don't expect much to be truthful with you. What we're going to do here is uh, we're just going to use the Google speed test. And uh, the reason I'm using this is it uses the same server every time. So let's see what happens. Yep, this is what I expected. This is inside the camper. And again, I'm in a horrendous, horrendous location. Uh, I'm surprised I'm even getting a megabit down, to be truthful with you. It's... Um, it's just a terrible spot where we're at. And um, let's see if we even get any speed up. Yeah, you can see how bad it is. So, so this is just using the paddle antennas. And, um, you know, just this is about the best I'm going to get. <laughs> I'm not even getting a megabit down and uh, almost getting two megabit up. All right, so uh, that was good for that. Let's uh, see how this new antenna install is going to go. So walk over here and I'll show you where we're going to be installing it. We're going to put it uh, right here. We're going to be mounting it uh, in this area. Again, these paddle antennas will be removed. I'll be drilling a hole through the base of this cabinet here to run the antennas and power. Uh, I'm going to stay with AC power. They do have a 12-volt version uh, that is a, a controlled power supply. And I'm going to be drilling probably right around in here uh, through the roof down. So everything will be kind of self-contained in this area. And then uh, right behind here, I've got a power strip that I can use. And uh, that's where that will be going. So I don't think this is going to be really a tough, tough install. Uh, so let's get this thing going. All right, we're going to come over about 16 inches. We me measured downstairs by about 10 or so. So we're going to put that hole right about here. And that should mount the unit. That'll be fine. So we're going to start with a pilot hole here. I did use a stud finder. You know, something like that and just went around and made sure that I didn't have any cross members or anything. This is just, you know, those inexpensive stud finders. All right, let's go ahead and use this hole saw. longer bit here just because of the depth of this thing it's you know about that far Okay, let's finish drilling this. Uh, you can see where we came through with that pilot hole. So we should be able to finish this up now and get that cable down through here. stick everything down here I'm gonna clean it with some alcohol just to kind of make sure that there's no residue that will keep things from sticking just a little bit of basic alcohol here on a rag Nothing. now to uh, 
fish this down in the hole and make sure I can get it. I'm going to use what they call a poor man's fish tape here. And um, it's just a piece of coat hanger. And I'm going to take these and kind of stagger them. Make it a little easier to get through the hole so they won't be quite as wide. So here we go. We'll just gotta get that ease through there. There we go. All right, let's go back upstairs and finish it. Feeding the cable through here. And it, you can see this adhesive backing that's here. Make sure this is where you want it to go because you only get one shot. Is not going anywhere now just for a little extra safety measure I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, X trim 100 around it just for good measure and that'll level out nicely all right let's go finish up downstairs all right, we're going to go ahead and do the permanent install now. Now, if you haven't seen my uh, installation video of when I first put this together, uh, I'll put a link up here at the top, up here. <laughs> and uh, there is a top and a bottom, and you, you can't get these uh, antennas reversed. If you do, you're not going to work well. But up here toward where your power connection is is where your, your um, cellular antennas go. And then the bottom here is where the Wi-Fi antennas go. I'm going to leave them off just a little bit from here. Again, radio frequencies are kind of funny. You're probably wondering, well, Jerry, why are you putting it here instead of behind the cabinet? Well, I want to give it every opportunity that, you know, we'll be able to pick the signal up in the bedroom, which this is a 40-foot fifth wheel, so we've got to shoot all the way across the living space, the kitchen, the bathroom, all the way into the bathroom, and when we're sitting outside, um, right outside the door here under our awning, I want to make sure that our iPads and things like that can pick stuff up if we're sitting outside and uh, using this. And if the signal's stronger when this than what it would be with our phones, because we've got the high, you know, higher gain antenna here, we'll set our internet up for our phones with this as well so finger tight do not over tighten these 
there's not a whole lot to them. All right. Let's uh, let's go speed test this. Crossing my fingers, hoping it's better. Anything's better than less than a megabit. And this is uh, again, we're going to use the same same Google speed test uh, with a measurement lab, so that we have uh, the exact same identical test. And look, oh my goodness! Now I know everybody out there is going really just four megabits five megabits you gotta realize this is a 500 getting close to 600 percent increase over what we had before um i'm pretty excited about this um upload speed is um maybe 200 250 percent better uh almost 300 percent better uh look at that uh 638 compared to what we had. Here you go. I'll show you the two results. Uh, here was our first result. Yeah, it was terrible. It was below a megabit. And now we're uh, over six. Now, again, I am in a location that is almost non-existent for internet. Six and four, I can work. I can actually work out on the road in something like this. So, um, and we can watch Netflix. We can do all those types of things pretty spectacular. I'm, I'm quite surprised in a worse, worse, worst case scenario of almost non-existent internet. How about that? Pretty excited about it. Well, let's look at the final install. It actually turned out pretty doggone good. Nice and clean. Uh, there it is. You can uh, see how it's all set up here. You know, from an aesthetics standpoint, um, you know, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. Again, I didn't want to put it behind any of the doors. I wanted to have as much uh, non-obstruction uh, for the signal as possible. Well, did it work? Well, for my needs, uh, it exceeded my expectations. Oh, well, let's, here, I'll show you. It worked. Here, we'll go, let's see, do that. Japanese cherry trees here in Macon. And uh, it all started back in the late <laughs> so, uh, 1940s. And there's YouTube. The name of William no Fickling. stutters. Looks fantastic. Uh, Mr. Fickling was a real estate developer. Uh, very, very well known uh, here in the middle of Well, the YouTube worked. I mean, it was, you know, click, point, bang. Uh, no stutters, no pauses, um, you know, no granulation in the video or anything. It's just super, super clear. And you may be asking yourself, Jerry, why are you getting excited over roughly six and a half megabits. Before, I didn't even have one. I had, what, 0.9? Uh, that's a over 600% increase. What I'm expecting is that, you know, from a hot spot uh, where I might have been using it inside and I was getting four or five, maybe even 10, now with the MoFi and this external antenna, you know, I'm expecting double digits uh, when we go into areas that we've been in the past and the challenges of where we've um, been before or will be going and the nice thing is we just pull into the campground and I flip the switch and turn it on I don't have to set up poles and you know odd antennas and get my cell phone out and start looking for where cellular towers are this is omnidirectional it's just park it turn it on and it works and it's going to work better than it did before gosh i love making rv life simpler we have enough challenges just you know pulling up and down the road and getting parked and you know doing all those things the last thing i want to do is spend hours setting up my wi-fi to be able to you know have entertainment and work that way gosh just just perfect just perfect install well it's called a it's called a pointing antenna P-O-Y-N-T-I-N-G. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I did not buy this off of Amazon. I think they're sold off of Amazon. I bought this from a, a group that actually specializes in uh, mobile antenna uh, and mobile products. Uh, they're a Pepwave uh, reseller. I'm using the MoFi 4500. And I will leave uh, information down in the description notes of this video. Or what I would love for you to try, if you haven't been, is go out to ilovervlife.com. ilovervlife.com. Here you'll see today's blog. I'll have just a little bit more of a write-up about the testing process that I went through before I installed it. I spent a couple hours doing that uh, just to make sure... <laughs> 
I was doing what needed to be done before I started drilling holes and I wanted to make sure this product would fit not only my needs but if you're considering it fit your needs as well and uh, then you can go to the RV accessories there's tons of accessories out there of things that Joan and I use on a regular basis when we travel if you're looking for something like that it might save you a few dollars uh, might be a little less expensive than where you've looked at before or save you from buying something that just won't work and a lot of things about those accessories that you'll see there um, you can go back and look at the videos where we reviewed them and most of those products just like this pointing I purchased I bought it this is not a sponsored video I bought it I needed it and I uh, wanted to share the results with you which I think were like right up there right <laughs> well I love doing these reviews uh, I love making RV life travel better and if you're like me and you have to work on the road I love being able to share with you tips that are not that expensive of how to make work easier on the road so you can do what we do work a day play a day um, it makes RV life so much fun oh, yeah of course that's another reason why I love RV life see you soon